Hey, this is Bonnie Cornelius, and I wanted to share with you a quick tutorial on creating a newborn swing uh, composite in Photoshop. Um, and this is a great way to add to your newborn gallery, um, add more variety, and also um, just to wow your clients, to attract new clients. A lot of times I'll post um, these finished composite photos on Instagram or Facebook and they get um, a lot of attention and a lot of people will hire me just because they would like these type of kind of over the top images of their babies. Um, I purchased the digital composite from Graceland Designs, um, which have a website with hundreds if not thousands of uh, digital backgrounds to choose from. You can also find thousands of these on um, Etsy. I found a lot on there, but this one is from Graceland Designs. Uh, and then I have this photo of little newborn Evie. Um, I photographed her on the bean bag. And what I typically do is I'll have the new, get the newborn into the pose. And then I will take this wool fluff. Um, you see the pink here. And I will stuff this underneath her because I want it to mimic the texture that's here, um, on the digital background. It makes it a lot easier, um, to form a more realistic composite if you have the texture correct. Um, the, um, the color doesn't have to be perfect, but the texture helps a lot. Um, the wool fluff I did get on Etsy. If you just go to Etsy and search, um, wool fluff, you can find it from a lot of different shops on there. It's relatively inexpensive. Um, it lasts a long time. I've had this for years. I just keep it in a little plastic bag um, and then just bring it out to stuff it under the newborns for this shot. Um, and um, if it's not the same exact color, that's fine. I can change that and I'm going to show you how I do that first. So I'll come back here to my composite and I'm going to click just the brush tool. Um, I'm going to hold down the alt key and then just click on to um, the color that I would like, the color of the fluff here. And you can see it comes up over here. Um, so it's changed the color of my brush. And then I want to come here back to Eevee and I will um, create a solid color layer. And it's going to be that color that I chose. And I'm going to change the blending mode here to color. And it has changed, you know, the whole color of the image. So I'm going to go to my mask and invert it with Control I or Command I if you're on a Mac. Um, and that has made this mask black. So it's kind of blacked out everything. And then I use a white brush um, to paint it back on where I want it, which is just over the fluff. So I'm going to set my brush to 100. I have just a soft white brush click on my mask and i'll go in a little bit uh, i'll zoom in a little bit so i can see what i'm doing and then i just want to paint it on here um, to change the color so it matches that digital background and it doesn't have to be perfect i don't want it on her or her skin but along out here it doesn't really matter if i get some out there I might just speed up my video here in a second so that you don't have to watch me do this. Okay, I think I have it on here pretty good. I can click uh, the backslash key and that can kind of show me where my mask is. And then I can make sure I have it on here pretty good. The red is where it's masked, so I want to not be red on the floor. Again, it doesn't have to be totally perfect because I'm going to be blending it into the backdrop anyway. I think that's good. And I'll flatten that, and then I'm going... Actually, I'm sorry, no. Come back. Um, I need to lower the opacity 
of that just so it the color blends in I'm gonna lower it to about 40 or 50 we'll see how that looks maybe 50 and then I'm gonna save this well, let me flatten it I'm going to save this. I have one saved before I change the color and I'm just going to um I'm just going to save another copy just so I have that original as well. And then I'm going to come over here to my digital backdrop and I'm going to uh pull her into it. So I'll go to file, place embedded, and then I'm going to find that file right here. It's going to make her smaller. I'm going to lower the opacity so I can see where she's going to lay. And just pull her over here to where I want her in the swing. And you just click and drag in at the corners in order to make her smaller. You can also um, hover at the corner here and you see how my cursor became that little like curvy arrow. And that allows you, if you click and drag, to turn her. I'm just going to put her, it doesn't have to be per right now because I can change it later. That's probably about where I want her. And then I just uh, click the check mark. I'm going to pull the opacity back up. And I'm going to make sure I'm on her layer. I'm going to go to Select, Subject. And let Photoshop just kind of cut her out for me. And now it is cut out, so I want to create a mask. So I come down here to the mask and just click that, and that kind of pulls her out into the into the scene, just cuts her out, I mean. And I can zoom in a little to see what I'm doing here. And again, I can still kind of pull her around and move her to where I want her. And then I'm going to... Click on that mask. I'm going to take my soft brush again and I'm going to be at about 70% and I want to start blending this in. So I want to be, have a black soft brush at about 70% to start and just slowly blend this fluff into the backdrop. And you can change the opacity of your brush depending on what you need it to be. Uh, sometimes I'll want to have a really lower opacity and just go slower blending in. I'm going to go in real tight here. I think I don't really need this fluff behind her, so I think I'm just going to get rid of it. I'm just at a hundred percent now just to mask this off so that's gone. I just kind of play around with it. Let's check back and see how it's looking.
Also, uh, one thing I forgot to mention um, is that I do try to shoot these a little bit um, with a higher aperture than I typically would. Um, so she was shot at um, f4.5. Um, I try to shoot between 4 and 5 uh, for most digital composites. It's because the composite is shot at a higher aperture, so you want to try to match that. You can see her feet are a little bit fuzzier than um, the background here. Um, so you want to try to avoid that. I don't think it's a deal breaker for this, but um, it's good if your baby is more in focus um, throughout her whole body than you might typically shoot. So there I have her cut out onto the backdrop. Again, hit the um, the backslash key again to just make sure I have everything. I might bring a little bit more back just so I have a little bit of the shadow. Um, let me see how that looks. So I want to take um, I want to take a white brush and at thirty percent opacity and just bring this back just a little. Just so I have the, the natural shadows. And I'll just double check to make sure everything looks good. And I will flatten that, and then I might, she looks so tiny there, I might just uh, crop in some so she's more prominent in the frame. And there you have a baby on the swing. Thanks for watching, y'all.